welcome back. We're here with Daniel Dubov. Dania, tell us how long was your trip here to Berlin? Well, it was reasonably long, but I think, uh, I mean, it could have been worse. Like, my only problem was that actually my flight from Moscow was delayed for like six hours. So the, the fun part was that actually, I mean, I got used to playing the chess.com rapid tournaments like every weekend. And this time I was actually... Uh, Okay, I'm going here. It's not that I'm disappointed yet, but I didn't like the, as a, as a, as the fact that I will have to skip my uh, my usual rapid tournament on um, what is it Saturday probably, uh, as I have the flight. But the I mean sort of good news was that actually my flight was like six. Uh, I mean they wait for like six hours, so I ended up actually playing this rapid from the uh, from the business lounge in the airport, and then I came here, and the very next day I mean I qualified to the next stage, and then I played the. Uh, as the next stage from here already. So yeah, my flight was not ideal. I mean, I also I had a flight to Istanbul and I had to go across the Istanbul to get to, to another Istanbul airport and stuff. I mean, but uh, I mean, you sort of expect it to, to be a mess nowadays, yeah? So um, yeah, it's not exactly surprising. It seems uh, faster than Andres Yusipenko. Anyway, um, yeah. My next question to you, um, your good friend and colleague uh, Alexander Morazevich has uh, mentioned several times that you have so many talents that you could easily have achieved uh, much more or at least the same success in other fields. Would you ever imagine yourself being professional in something else? Yeah, but okay, I mean, it went the way it went and I'm sort of, uh, sort of fine with it, so yeah. Do you think that chess, or at least for you, is it a drug? I think it is, yeah. Like yesterday, uh, I mean, okay, yesterday I played some, like at night I played some Bliss on chess.com being a bit drunk, yeah? So basically, if that's what you do when you're a bit drunk, then, then probably it's a drug, yeah? I don't know. You're a pretty popular figure. You are often being taken interviews by some different journalists, not chess journalists like Subchak, Pivovarov, and many others. Uh, do you consider yourself as a media person? Yeah, I don't know what it means to be honest. I mean, I, I'm, I definitely don't consider myself as a person who's looking for it, sort of. So, uh, and yeah. I mean, when I get offers, I mean, some, sometimes I say yes. I don't think it makes me you know, like a real content maker or something. I don't know. And have you recently got uh, any different offers uh, for for work not considered to be with chess? What do you mean exactly? Like if I was offered uh, to, I, I don't know, work for Kremlin or what, or... Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I don't get the question, but anyway, his answer is probably no. Yeah, probably some media work, but anyway, um, no, next really. Next question. Um, doing now... It, doing it for free, actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice, you're doing it for free. Uh, we have to mention this topic, uh, the recent ban of Karak, and uh, do you have any opinion on this topic? Well, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think the, the decision FIDE made is a bit like strange. Like, first of all, what I think is that basically there are like formal things and uh, like human things. When we're talking human things, I think it's completely fine that all the like private tournaments like Stavanger or whatever, they said they, they will never invite him again. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with that. They have all the rights to do so, and uh, I mean, in general, I share their their opinion that he is not right, to say the least. Uh, speaking of FIDE, I mean, fortunately or unfortunately, they cannot just base uh, their decisions on some, like, whatever, human common sense or, or whatever it is. So they basically have the, uh, the handbook that is saying, like, what, what he was sort of convicted of is, is that actually he, he, his damage, I mean, his actions damage the, uh, the image of the game. Which is probably true. I mean, again, it doesn't even matter if he's right or not. I, per I personally don't think he's right, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, secondly, what I think is strange is that basically, I mean, again, when uh, when someone is is, is under uh, suspicion of, let's say, like I don't know, like uh, massive murder, yeah, you you don't expect him to uh, to get away with like uh, two weeks in jail. Like, I'm not saying they had to punish him, but in general, like, it's either way more or nothing. That's my opinion. Like, it's either they say he's not guilty at all and that's fine, or they say, like, it's at least, like, three years without the game and so on. Like, I'm speaking logic here. It doesn't even matter if he's right or not, but in general, like, if we are talking 
a topic this big, like it cannot be just half a year without chess, which basically means he will just not play the candidates and then he's back. This should not be considered uh, as a uh, like proper, I mean, proper punishment in this case. Yeah, I mean, if he is not right, it should have been more. If he is right, it should have been less. That's my point. Right, Daniel, that was uh, very fulfilling. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts and good luck for tomorrow. Yep, thanks.